Hey guys, welcome to the Tuesday Tune. My name's Steve, I run Vorsprung Suspension up here in Whistler. And this week uh, we decided to talk about one of the most important parts of your suspension, which is obviously the oil. Uh, oil has a couple of uh, major purposes in your suspension. Obviously lubrication is a big one, uh, and basically being the medium through which damping is generated is the second one. So today with me I have Professor Alex Marangoni, uh, Canada Research Chair, Professor of Soft Material Sciences, basically one of the oil, guru, oil gurus of the world. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit about the requirements of the oil uh, in your suspension and how those requirements are met uh, and how those boxes are ticked basically. In our workshop we use uh, quite a number of different oils. A lot of them are actually from WPL, which is Alex's uh, oil company here. When I say oil company, we're not talking quite along the lines of uh, Exxon <laughs> Mobil, but uh, a lubricants based company that focuses on bio oils, I suppose. So in suspension, uh, when selecting oils for any given application, there's three main factors that I look at. Viscosity uh, is a big one, so the thickness of the oil, as most people would know it. Viscosity index, which is the thermal stability of the oil, how much the viscosity changes as you heat it up, is particularly critical in some damping applications. And the third factor that is always important to varying degrees is the lubricity. So the ability of the oil to lubricate and reduce friction. Obviously in certain places, lubricity matters a lot more than the damping properties, such as in the lowers of your fork. Uh, and then in other places, like in your rear shock damper, uh, the viscosity and the viscosity index are much more important. Yes, well, oils are very, uh, it's much more complex than you think. And as Steve was mentioning, viscosity is one of the most important characteristics. And viscosity is defined as the resistance to flow or how thick the fluid is. I guess if we stick our hand in water and move it around or we stick our hand in a very like thick grease, we understand what viscosity is all about, that resistance to flow. But the design of your suspension should be inherently related to the viscosity of the oil or vice versa. And there's many things that are, that, are, that are inherent in the design of the suspension that should be taken into consideration the viscosity of the oil. That viscosity, as you will, you, you see it uh, listed as weight. Now, a weight of an oil it has a very wide range. Um, usually we talk about viscosity in terms of um, um, centistokes. And Stensistoke is a measure of this dynamic viscosity. Viscosity, as we experience it, is more related to something called the dynamic viscosity, and that has units of pascals. Now, a kinematic viscosity is just that <coughs> dynamic viscosity divided by the density. The one that you see listed in many uh, suspension oil bottles, and it says CST, Centistokes. And uh, maybe a five weight oil can have a kinematic viscosity of something like 15 centistokes, while a 20 weight oil, degrees. Uh, sorry, at 40 degrees, and a 120 weight oil would have a kinematic viscosity of something like 70 centistokes. If you check um, on the internet, for example, the Peter Verdoni uh, mm -hmm. list of, uh, of viscosities, you will see the incredibly wide range of viscosities that oils can have with the same weight designation. Uh, that can be a little bit problematic because of the, uh, right? Because, yeah. because sometimes a difference of five centistokes can have a very large effect on the performance Correct. of your suspension, but they're both five weight or they're both 10 weight. Exactly, and depending on the specific application, the damper that you have, that can have varying effects. So it can either have you know, a relatively negligible effect or it can be really quite substantial. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, have a look at Peter Verdone's chart of the ISO viscosity uh, of pretty much every suspension oil out there, possibly except yours actually, uh, and the one on the WPL oil side, you'll see how those uh, how the rated weights stack up against their true kinematic viscosities. And one thing that we should also clarify now is when you go to the store and buy your car oil, and you see 5W30 yes. or 10W30, that 5W does not stand for weight. It actually stands for winter. Uh, so 5W30, 10W30, 10W40, whatever those designations have nothing to do with the weight designation that we associate with viscosity. 
One of the important uh, properties of oil, as we mentioned before, is uh, the viscosity index, which is the thermal stability, how much the viscosity changes. Uh, that's typically done by measuring the viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius and at 100 degrees Celsius. By comparing the numbers, uh, the viscosity, the kinematic viscosity at 40 degrees to 100 degrees, we get a number known as the viscosity index. The higher this is, the smaller the change in viscosity. So for certain applications, as I said before, rear shock dampers are a big one, uh, the viscosity index can be pretty important. Uh, but we'll discuss more about uh, how can you achieve a high viscosity and it's such an important property where we discuss the structure of oil. WPL, which is Whistler Performance Lubricants, these guys, uh, use bio-oils. Uh, I'll get Alex to run us through some of the various sources of different oils that we use in suspension. Yes, well the most uh, common uh, oil used in suspension would be something derived from petroleum, but a lot of things are derived from petroleum, so let's call them hydrocarbons. Think about mineral oil, something that you would... Johnson's baby oil. <laughs> I mean that is a mineral oil. Mineral you can buy in a pharmacy. It is, it is a refined version of a fraction of petroleum and that forms the base of the oil into which you're going to add additives to give it functionality. So that would be a mineral oil, a petroleum derived mineral oil. Then you also have a second category of oils in general, also petroleum derived, which would be esters. And an ester oil is a synthetic oil. You make esters. And ester is a particular chemical group. And then you have the purely synthetic oils which are the they call them the polyalpha olefins. And those are uh, derived from ethylene gas. And you have these alpha olefins, which they polymerize into these long chains, um, long chains with branches. So it looks like a, almost like a, a fuzzy rope, if you may. That would be your polyalpha olefin. Uh, while the esters look more branched and cross-linked. While the hydrocarbons from mineral oil uh, are just long, long string of pearls. Now, oils derived from biosynthetic, but from biological sources like ours, like biosynthetic oils, are esters. But they're triesters. So we use triesters and they look like stars. So instead of being fuzzy ropes or little string of pearls, these things, you have little stars floating around. Of course, this is not a, an exhaustive list, but in general, I would classify oils as ones that are derived from um, miner that use mineral oils as the base, which is just a, a fraction from petroleum. Then you have, so but these ones are not synthesized, so therefore they're, called, they're not called synthetic. But then you have the ones that are synthetic, that is, that somebody like derive a compound from petroleum and then actually synthesize molecules for, uh, for oil applications. Those can be synthetic esters, and they can be synthetic poly polyalpha olefins or PAOs two different properties of these two synthetic type oils. Then you also have the biosynthetic esters, which are also called triglycerides, all the plant or animal oils. Um, and um, then we'll discuss something about viscosity index improvers and lubricity improvers in a second. Now, two characteristics of oil that are of key importance are lubricity. And lubricity is, is how slippery the oil is, how it interacts with metal surfaces, how it decreases friction between surfaces. That property of decreasing friction is extremely important in any kind of suspension work. So mineral oils have a very low to non-existent lubricity. A synthetic ester has a medium lubricity. The synthetic polyalpha olefins, what is usually referred to as a synthetic oil that you buy, have very low lubricity. Uh, while the biosynthetic esters or triglycerides um, have a very high lubricity. Now, the other property, however, on the other hand, is this viscosity index. If you recall, that is the relative change in viscosity between 40 and 100 degrees. The higher it is, the better it is. So, mineral oils have extremely low viscosity index, meaning they're not very good. After they heat up, the viscosity drops tremendously. The synthetic esters have a medium viscosity index, the synthetic oils or the synthetic PAOs, those are extremely high viscosity index which makes them extremely useful in suspension uh, uh, work. The biosynthetic esters have medium viscosity index. Now if you add, if you add to this list a viscosity index improver molecule for example, 
uh, I'm sh we have shown here that the more of this compound, viscosity improver you add, the lubricity drops as much as the viscosity index increases. So you're adding it, the viscosity index improves, and that's what you want, but the lubricity goes down. Now, you also have lubricity improvers or lubricity additives. And those, of course, as you add more of those, the lubricity increases. Remember, you decrease the friction coefficient between surfaces. But the viscosity index now decreases, so they're fighting against each other. So the way that some of these VI improvers work is that they're basically something like a tangled mess of spaghetti, yep. I suppose. As they heat up, um, you have a molecule, a very long molecule chain that it basically unravels, and as these molecule chains pass each other, they tangle in each other, and that increases the resistance to shear force or the viscosity. Those obviously uh, are subject to mechanical breakage, and this is why uh, suspension oil, particularly in rear shocks that are under very high load like that, eventually break down and you notice that heat starts to affect your shock more and more. So when the fluid is fresh, it's affecting it less. When it's old, it's affecting it more. That mechanical interference is the same reason, I believe, that uh, the lubricity drops. So because these are an additive, these can basically be put into any oil. Uh, and as Alex has said, as we've generally found, there is uh, a trade-off between viscosity index and lubricity. So we use a lot of the WPL oils that Alex designs, uh, particularly in forks and anything where like friction is, you know, a really paramount uh, concern because they're excellent lubricants. Uh, there's a couple of applications that we don't use them in. Fox rear shocks, for example, that have a huge dependence on the viscosity. Um, but to go back to that viscosity index versus lubricity factor, Fox, for example, have their, well, they had 10 weight green, which was extremely good lubricant. Uh, same viscosity at 40 degrees as the 10 weight red, but a much lower viscosity index. So the same, essentially, the same thickness of oil used for two different uh, applications, depending on whether the primary concern was the thermal stability uh, or the lubrication characteristics. One thing I would like to add there is that a lot of the properties of the high-end oils are given not only, this, this refers to the base oil, the base liquid that is present there, is the additives that you put in. That really makes many of these oils. So we have viscosity index improver, lubricity improvers, uh, detergent packages, uh, we also have anti-corrosion additives. Uh, all those things contribute towards the functionality of the oil. Um, what we are doing at WPL, it's trying to step back a little bit and not only using the additives, but trying to understand the chemistry of all these oils because each one of those have properties that are essential, not essential, but key um, for the functionality of a suspension oil. Can we understand what, uh, what the relationship between the structure of the different oils and their functionality and can we basically squeeze out functionality without using the additives because uh, even though, for example, a synthetic oil is much, it's much more stable than a biosynthetic ester or a synthetic ester, um, it does degrade, but what degrades is the additives that are, that are placed in the oil. So additive stability becomes critical then. Yes, the oil is stable, uh, more stable, but the additives are not as stable. So you also lose some stability by using the additives. So, so as with all our uh, Tuesday Tune videos, this is uh, really scratching the surface of a, quite a complex topic. But yeah, I hope that's something interesting for you guys uh, to think about. Thank you very much, Steve, and Force from Suspension for inviting us to, for this really nice chat today and you for your attention. Yeah. Until next week, guys. See you then.